Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek, the internet's most passionate software engineering show. I'm your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and today we're going to be talking about FizzBuzz. So sit back and download a cup of knowledge because SE Geek begins now. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about FizzBuzz, that classic, uh, you know, problem of printing out uh, fizz if a number is divisible by three, buzz if it's divisible by five, or fizz buzz when it's divisible by fifteen. It's actually a very classic example that's uh, typically used in uh, interviews. So what I'm going to do first. I'm going to go over to this uh, site called RosettaCode.com, which is a great site. Uh, basically, it has a lot of you know examples of uh, different problems in different languages. And just to start out, I'm going to be going through the Java examples uh, just to show a little contrast to uh, the Groovy example that I'm going to show later. And I'll also show you some even some uh, shorter examples uh, that you can do in other languages just to you know show you that. While Groovy is really good, there are other languages that can do it shorter. Um, you know whether you deem that better or not is you know up to you. That's somewhat subjective. So let's go through uh, a job, some Java examples. So here we have uh, first one if else ladder. Typically, you know you have a class, you have your main, all this you know uh, scaffolding that you have to put together before you actually get to the real code. So we're going doing a for loop going 1 to 100 which you know is one of the you know things that you ha that you're demonstrating when doing fizzbuzz is that you you know understand basic looping and then we have a bunch of you know if else statements so if it's divisible by 15 meaning it's divisible by 3 and 5 you print out fizzbuzz if it's divisible by 3 actually I should uh call this out just to make sure that you're aware of it. This is the modulus operator. So basically it divides the number by this. Uh, if there's a remainder, it'll be whatever the remainder is, else it'll be zero. So you know if you do some, uh, some number mod another number and that equals equals or, or I should say equals dot you know equals zero, then uh, that is divisible by you know this number. So, you know, we have the same thing for divisible by 3, divisible by 5. If it's not divisible by any of those, you print out uh, the number, which you can see here. So that's one, you know, Java example. Uh, here's another example using concatenation. Uh, same basic idea, doing the for loop, uh, keeping a string variable, you know, so that you can concatenate onto it. Um, Obviously, it gets reset every time in the loop, uh, re reallocated. So, but here, you know, you just do the if and uh, you know add on the fizz if it's divisible by three, five if it's divisible by buzz, um, you know, or just the number itself, and then you print out, print that out. There's also one using ternary operator, which uh, I've shown in other videos. Uh, you know, in Groovy as well, the ternary operator is in Java. So, you know, you can do the same basic idea here where, you know, you do the for statement again. And this one, instead of this, you have the ternary here. So, you know, you do the, you know, ternary expression, if this, else this, etc. And then you print out the fizz buzz. This one's actually, you know, some of these, just the way they're set up, get a little harder to, to read. Uh, with the ternary, but whatever, we'll keep going. Uh, there's also, you know, recursive ways of doing the same thing. So recursion is ju yeah, just another way of doing uh, looping. Uh, so, you know, here's a way of doing that. And then alternative one, you know, using a ternary operator, or is it? Yeah, turn there it is, ternary operator. And here's one using arrays, I guess. Um, I haven't really looked at this one, but another interesting example. So basically what I'm going to do is go over to my example. This is a Groovy example doing it in 62 characters on one line. This is not necessarily the shortest example, but I thought this one was a little, a little bit more readable. 
Uh, I can also make it more readable than it is, but I'd bump it up to 65 characters. So I'll show you what I have here. So I'm using uh, basically the range operator here, putting it in parentheses so I can iterate over it uh, as a collection. So going 1 to 100, that's my loop with the dot each. And that takes the closure, and I print line, and I use a groovy string here where in it I'm using the ternary operator here, checking to see if it, uh, which would be the number passed in, is divisible by 3. Um, and basically, you know, having it uh, be fizz if it's, wait a minute, how, yeah. Uh, basically, if it is divisible by uh, 3, this will come up as 0, which will be false, which is why you get fizz. If not, you get, you know, the empty string. And same idea with buzz. If this, uh, you know, has a remainder, uh, you'll print out the empty string, else buzz. And then I have, you know, using the Elvis operator here and just putting the number. So this will actually print out the number. So if I run this, you'll see I get, you know, a very long string of 1 to 100 doing, you know, printing out the fizz buzz. So, you know, with fizz buzz, you get 1, 2, not divisible by 3 or 5, fizz, 4, then buzz, which is, you know, 5 divisible by 5. Um, six, which is divisible by three again, and all the way, you know, up until you get to hit 15 and you get fizz buzz. So this is one way to do it. I'm going to go back to my web browser here. Um, let's see, this was the shortest way I could find doing in Groovy, which is just one character less than mine. Uh, it doesn't use the Groovy string in here. It just uses concatenation. Um, but I found the for me uh, using uh, the groovy string is just a little bit more readable. Uh, also, it's a little bit more performant than using concatenation. So you know, trade offs here. Um, but you know, this is probably the shortest way that I've seen uh, just doing you know a searching a searching around in the on the internet for groovy examples. Now, the shortest way that I found. Uh, just in general, which this is 43 lines of, of code, is doing it in Perl. So this is, although looking at it right now, like I didn't really look too hard at it, but looking at it, it's kind of it, it's kind of hard to discern what it's doing. Whereas, you know, going back to the Groovy example, like the one of the things that I like about Groovy is that it's expressive, you know, meaning you have uh, less verbose code, but it still remains somewhat readable. Now, obviously, I could make this even a little bit more readable by, you know, inserting a line there, a space here, um, some spaces around here, you know, doing that, and just. You know, obviously none of these spaces are actually needed, but, you know, can make the code a little bit more readable. And when you're dealing with code, making it more readable is, you know, a lot more important than having code that's, you know, as small as it can possibly be. Having it like as tight and, you know, small as it can possibly be, like in the example I showed in the last episode, is just uh, an exercise in seeing how far you can compress it and what you can get away with. But for you know good maintainable code, you want it to be as readable as possible. So this makes it a little bit more readable than it was before. Um, that's pretty much you know all I'd like to say about that. So this is Fizzbuzz, an example of how to do it in Groovy. So I'll talk to you next time.